Right, so welcome to everybody who's joining the webinar today. LinkedIn has changed. The world has not ended. Um, there are some interesting things going on on the planet right now, but we're pretty calm at Barclay Jones because actually uh, this particular change to LinkedIn has played right into our hands because as far as we're concerned, LinkedIn is a fantastic bit of kit. And if you follow us on social media, we're always writing about the fact that you're not, you don't often expect enough return on investment from it. And you equally don't treat your other systems with respect. So we're going to have a bit of a chat about that to maybe reboot some of these thoughts. So with Barclay Jones, there's three things that we do. We do recruitment technology. So if you're looking to change your system or make it more effective, whether it be Bullhorn, Bond, Firefish, Talent Rover, RDB, etc., or websites, because we see those as recruitment technology, talk to us, we can help you. If you're looking to make your recruiters more successful in how they write their adverts, use LinkedIn, use Bullhorn, Broadbean, all of the same stuff again, because ultimately the recruiters are the ones that make businesses successful, not technology, then call us. And if you're a marketer or recruitment leader that wants to brand your business more effectively, you need mentoring or coaching to basically use marketing to make money, let us know. We can help. Moving on. So my name's Lisa. I'm one of the directors of Barclay Jones and I'll quickly introduce Rose. Good morning everybody. Welcome to the webinar. Thank you for being with us on this. Well, it's lovely and sunny in Leeds today, so I hope it is where you are as well. Um, I've been a trainer in recruitment for goodness knows quite a long time now. Um, and one of my favorite pieces of kit to train on is LinkedIn. I've been doing quite a lot of LinkedIn training this week with clients. So I'm really excited to uh, be on this webinar and uh, share some thoughts with you about it. Brilliant. Thank you very much, everyone. So she's been with us so long, she can't remember how long she's been actually in the industry. I think we're looking at 2003? 2003. All good stuff. So a lot's been going on, and isn't that a beautiful picture? I hope when I'm his age, someone gets a picture of me looking that gorgeous. So we've had Trump hitting us between the eyes or between the legs, depending which side of the channel or, or the Atlantic we sit on. We've got Brexit distracting us on a daily basis. And then LinkedIn decides to be the third catastrophic traumatic event this year and decides to make some changes. And you can tell, I'm hoping, that I'm being pretty sarcastic because actually in the general scheme of things, I don't believe that these changes should make a difference. But let's move forward. I would like to hear from you, though, about how you feel about the LinkedIn changes. And you'll see a poll popping up on your screen right now. I want you to grab your mice very quickly. Tell us what you think. What do you think about these changes? Very, very quick. Five seconds left. We're on a mission to get this webinar done super quick today so you can get back and practice some of the things that we've told you about. I'm closing the poll now. Thank you very much. So let's have some perspective here, people. Most of you are basically saying you need to get used to it. Well, yeah, you do. Uh, no one's going to start a petition. Absolutely flipping pointless. When most of us are using the system for free, and most of us, when we have um, started up using the system, we've signed the terms and conditions that say that LinkedIn can do whatever the bloody hell they want. And to be fair, Rightly so. Nothing in life is free. Um, some people think that some of the best features have gone, and I hope we can reset some of that today. But to manage your expectations, we do run some really cool LinkedIn coaching and training workshops on this. We are LinkedIn partners, so we know a lot about all of the different versions of LinkedIn. But um, we can't squeeze five to six hours worth of knowledge into a 30-minute webinar. So we're going to give you some tasters today. And if you want to know any more, by all means, let us know. Right, moving forward. Okay, thank you for that. The next thing I really want to know, and this is a really important thing I need to hear from you today, is how much time do you spend on LinkedIn each day? Again, grab your mouth and really think deeply about this. In, you know, be real. How much time do you really spend on LinkedIn every single day? Five, four, three, two, one. One, this is what I do with my kids when they're not getting ready in the morning. Let's close this poll down. Okay, and I'm going to share the results. Fantastic. So we've got a significant amount of you spending at least one to two hours. Now, we've done some studies on this, and actually when we've worked with clients who want to be more effective just generally, because recruiter success is a bit of a mantra of ours, we've discovered that the average recruitment consultant in the UK earns between, I don't know, 20 and 30K a year. And then we've also found that when we've actually studied them, initially they've told us between one and two hours, but when we've actually studied um, their web analytics, how long they're actually spending on LinkedIn, 
it's double that. It's actually three to four hours a day. And that can equate on the average recruitment salary of £15,000 a year. Now, I have a challenge with that because I'm told by most recruiters that they're using LinkedIn for free. If you're spending 50% of your very, very precious time on LinkedIn, you're spending 15 grand a year on LinkedIn and therefore, oh my flipping God, the LinkedIn recruiter license has nothing on that. So just have a think about that while we're looking at things today because one of the goals that we have when we work with recruitment consultants is to to make them more effective and ultimately the only way you can do that is to be quicker and more successful at using this stuff so let's maybe try and spend less time on LinkedIn that's not because I think LinkedIn is pointless I just think we do things that we don't need to do on it and there's a lot of stuff we do need to do moving forward okay so I just think with all the changes to LinkedIn there needs to be some perspective so in every meeting I'm in at the moment um, with recruiters there's a lot of stress around and it, maybe it's calmed down over the last few weeks but certainly when we went live with this webinar a few weeks back there was a lot of people literally needing therapy um, and obviously it's causing a bit of a storm people saying oh I want to boycott LinkedIn and use something else or why are they forcing me to buy a license and it's caused massive disruption but to be fair they're constantly changing the system they have been since it was born in 2003 and I just think we need to be maybe have some perspective and I'm going to talk a little bit more about this later on but one of the reasons why we're running this webinar is to show you some things that we think are still extremely viable and just talk to you about how you're using it rather than the specific tools that are in the, in the system so I'm going to hand over to Rose and she's going to talk to you about your LinkedIn profile and the typical kinds of things that you can do more effectively even though it's changed Okay, so let's have a quick look, what, look at what we've got here. I mean, I personally, and I, and I know it's all sort of uh, subjective and so on, it's everybody's opinion, but I really, really love the new profile. I think once you've got used to it, it's absolutely fine. And there's still lots of avail availability in here to get yourselves found. And this is one of the things that I train on quite a lot. This is, um, you know, think about your profile and think about it's sort of an elevator pitch. It's got to persuade someone to connect with you. It's got to benefit sell how you can help people. Um, don't let it read like a CV. I do this and uh, I can do this and this. But how can you actually help your candidates and clients and why should they connect? So for me, keywords are a big thing. We don't want you to go too keyword crazy and your profile not to make sense to people. Someone's still got to read it. But make sure you get the right keywords in there. And think about those two opening statements that someone sees as soon as they hit your profile. You've got something called a headline and you've also got your summary. And yes, people are going, oh, well, the summary's been shortened now and so on. And well, yeah, that's fine. But let's think about the opening sentence of that summary. You've got, I think, about 220 characters um, and really make those make a difference. Um, I've got to read that headline and that opening sentence and want to read more. So I think actually this is a really great time to just do a bit of spring cleaning. I mean, it's very spring-like today. You know, sort of see it as a positive. LinkedIn's changed a bit. My profile looks a bit different. I'm going to go on the, this afternoon or Monday morning. Think about it. Spend half an hour going through your profile. Think about how you want to be found. And really have a good old spring clean of it. Um, and make sure that it's up to date and all those keywords are in there. I think a really great feature of profiles now is I think that there's a lot better visibility of your activity and also somebody else's activity um, and the recommendations part as well. Again, for me, it's personal, but I think the recommendations part of a profile looks a lot, a lot better than it did before. Um, and one of the things that I, we always say when I'm running the training course is, you know, when you come in to look at somebody's profile, I've just jumped into LinkedIn and we're on Lisa's account, so I'm just going to jump in and have a look at her profile for a second. God help us all. <laughs> So really, if you're wondering, if, you, if I said headline and, you, and I said summary and you weren't too sure what I meant, then your headline is this section, which is directly underneath your name at the top. So I've just highlighted it for you. So make sure that really smacks people between the eyes. Obviously, we want to tell people what you do, but you know, don't just have it saying recruitment consultant at this company, because that's a bit boring. To, you know, give us some more information. And then your summary starts here. And this is the first 220 characters that you get to see of it now. So really, I want to read that, and it needs to make me want to read more. Hence, I'll click the See More option here. And then I can go into your full summary. We want profiles to be sticky as well, i.e., kind of that's the term to say we want people to stay on your profile and, and look at more. So ways that you can make your profile sticky is to add other bits of media. So on Lisa's profile here, we've got some lovely links to PDFs, to PowerPoints, maybe even YouTube videos. Just make it really sort of interactive and engaging for somebody to have a look at. 
um, I definitely think that's uh, worth, worth your time um, looking at those points. And then activity as well, sorry, that's just one thing that I wanted to show you. I'm just going to scroll a bit further down Lisa's profile. And this is really good. If you're um, going to have calls with candidates and clients, don't just look at somebody's profile and stop. I mean, look, I hope to goodness that you're all looking at people's profiles anyway. I'm sure you are. But the amount of recruiters that approach me about PHP, PHP development roles, and I just think you've not even read my profile. But read somebody's profile, but then also go into the recent activity of that, uh, that profile. So I'm going to click see all, all activity here. And that gives you a second level, like a deeper dive into that person. So what is this person about? What do they like? What are they sharing? What are they talking about? So I would just say, you know, a great recruiter always looks at a profile and the activity of someone before they try and connect to them or certainly pick up the telephone and have a conversation with them. So for me, I don't know, the, the profile thing's not a big deal. I think it looks great, um, and I actually think it's, it's improved it quite a bit. In terms of sourcing as well, um, I've done LinkedIn training, like I said, over the past couple of weeks quite a lot, and obviously we're all on the new version now, and people are saying, oh, I can't, I can't search LinkedIn anymore. And I just think... But you can. Like, what have I, what have I missed? Because I've been searching and searching and searching, and it's absolutely fine. Um, you're on a free account. So, yes, if you go crazy and run loads and loads and loads and loads of searches, then unfortunately LinkedIn will say to you, oh, hang on a second, we think you're doing lots of searches for business reasons. Maybe you should upgrade. But I kind of think that's fair enough. But things like using your Boolean logic, you know, and or not quotation marks and brackets, that still all stands. They haven't stripped that off. That's still there. Um, a little tip for you is, um, I don't know if you know this, a lot of people don't do it, but when you do those instructions, you have to do them in capital letters. Um, LinkedIn state that it will, the, the actual search string will work better if it's in capital letters. And do you know what? If you get your search strings more accurate, then it might mean that you don't have to run as many searches and therefore you're not hitting that commercial search limit. So getting your Boolean is right, is, is very key, I think. LinkedIn have also got a few search terms as well that they've built in. So you can do a search for things like title or company and specifically state that the current job title of a person or the company that they currently work for. Because that was a little bit of a filter that we had before and that sort of disappeared off the filters, but actually you can still use that if you want to. So, I mean, let's have a quick look. If I just run into search and I do title dot dot and then do let's do program manager and obviously I'm popping quote marks around that and hit search that's me just with that little title function at the beginning that's me telling LinkedIn I only want to find people who have a current position of title so that might be a little bit of a tip for you uh, to use there as well Great things about viewing the profiles, these are little top tips we give out on the training as well, so you're getting these for free today, is when you're looking at somebody's profile, you might do this already, you might not, you can actually export them to PDF if you need to. So if you've got a CRM and you're parsing candidates onto your system, but you haven't got a CV yet, then actually you can do that from somebody's profile. I'll show you that in a second. You can also share profiles on LinkedIn as well, which is another great little nifty tip I think that's in there. And then one of my favorite searches on LinkedIn is a school or a university search, which again, a lot of people, someone said to me yesterday, has that always been there? And I was like, yeah, it's actually been there for years and years. They just keep moving it around and it's sort of a little bit hidden out of the way, but it's a really fantastic search. So if I just have a quick look at Scott's profile, Scott will wonder who on earth Lisa is because I'm on her, her account. Mm -hmm. But just for example, the PDF thing and the sharing thing, if I go to Scott, click on the little button at the top, um, I've got share profile and I've also got PDF. Okay. Um, the university search is really great. If you're in an industry where um, maybe a particular university is quite good at producing good candidates for the sector that you're in, then you might want to do a university search. Now, I'm just going to do this quickly. I'm going to do Leeds, because I'm in Leeds, and I'm going to go to the University of Leeds, because most universities have um, pages on LinkedIn now. So I'm going to go to the University of Leeds. I'm going to hit See Alumni, and this is the bit that a lot of people don't know exists. If I hit See Alumni, 
it takes me in and it lists everybody on LinkedIn who said that they have been to Leeds University. So I've got 162,000 results there. But the really great thing about this is I can search for keywords within. So if I'm looking for, like I had my program manager or my IT people or whatever it might be, I can physically put those keywords in there hit search and then it will list everybody with those keywords on the profile that went to that university. And that works really, really well in my experience for some recruiters. Can I just jump in there as well, I don't know if you can all hear me because I'm reaching across, but one of the things I love about the university search is we do aim it sometimes at, we think very literally about this and we say it's for, it's for new grads, but think about this, you're a recruiter taking a really interesting brief from a client, and if you're a great recruiter, you will have an idea of the typical demography or demographic of the, the best candidates within their organization. And if they say to you that actually, I don't know, 10% of the people that are in their business come from St Andrews University. That tells you that they favour that university. So why aren't you at least searching for people who went to that university as part of your shortlisting process? Because your job as a recruiter is to create a very happy marriage. And we don't need Tinder or Matchmaker.com to do that. What we can do is we can go onto LinkedIn and say, you're going to fit in really well, John Smith, because you went to the same university as most of the people that you're going to be working with. And that is going to be a phenomenal icebreaker. Sorry to interrupt, but that's something for you to think about. Don't just think about new grads. Think about people who went to that university and maybe how you can shoehorn them in based on that very important demographic data. Fabulous. Okay. So we're just going to run another poll now. So this time it is what is your preferred sourcing, sourcing method? So let me grab this poll for you. and I'm just going to launch it now. So just as we did before, hopefully you're going to see that on your screen. Fantastic. So if you could answer that question, that would be great. Thank you. So we can see those coming through. Quite interesting. Is it different to what we expect, I wonder? So we're going to give you a couple more seconds. I think we're almost there. We're going to close the poll now. Fabulous. Okay. And let's share it so you can all see it as well. So what do we think, Lisa? Is this, is this a surprise? Or? <laughs> this is falling straight into our hands, and we're actually creating a load of content at the moment called the content of your CRM, and we're going to be running a big six-week project on this. So recently, we've done a load of content around what to stop doing in your recruitment business, and one of the things that we think you should stop doing is relying so heavily on LinkedIn. Again, rumor control before LinkedIn turn up at my door with a SWAT team. I love LinkedIn. I think it's a great bit of kit, but its job is to create a journey onto your CRM not the other way around. The CRM does no longer need to be the mad aunt that you invite over only at Christmas, sat in the corner being totally ignored for the other 364 days. LinkedIn has a great data set, but it's never going to be as good as the data set of your own CRM system if you take care of it. LinkedIn is not a USP, your CRM is, so that's me kind of barking at you. But just have a think about 40% of the recruitment world depend upon LinkedIn, and then when it changes, have a real problem with it changing, and they're not paying for it. I don't know, that's, I have a real challenge with that. Job boards are still a dependence, uh, long may that continue to a certain degree, but I'm very worried about CRM. We spend a lot of money on CRM and not enough time on it. So that's interesting, thank you very much for that, because that's going to help us with our content later on this month. Okay, so something from my perspective, I'm massively passionate about recruiters being successful and what that really means, yes, obviously making more money, it means you having more time to either go home and spend more time with your partner, your kids or that bottle of gin. It certainly means you being in a better emotional state so when someone asks you what you do for a living, you don't go, oh, I'm a recruiter. And they go, oh, that's just like being an estate agent, isn't it? I still meet recruitment leaders who are embarrassed about the sector that they work in and I'm, I've been in recruitment now since 2000. I think it's a great profession, a great sector, it's not just a great job. So let's have a think about how we can be alluring, how we can multitask, it's not all about sourcing. Tell me though, very quickly, um, and this is really the last poll, do you know how many profile views you've received in the last 90 days? Now, don't chew a wasp and say, oh, it's all changed, I can't tell, you can, because in LinkedIn in the top left-hand corner, it does actually tell you how many profile views you've had in the last 90 days. If we're clever with digital marketing and we're clever as salespeople, we want to be in the peripheral vision of our ideal talent and our ideal candidates 24-7. I want you on the phone interviewing talent while other talent is looking at you. So when you get off the phone, you can see who's looked at you on LinkedIn, which is a fantastic feature, and you can swipe the ones that you want. 
Why do we spend so much time sourcing on LinkedIn? It's because we're not spending enough time attracting attention. Most recruitment consultants I know, though, how, know how to attract attention in the real world, especially when they go out on a Friday night, but they seem to not do it particularly well online. Right, interesting. I'm just going to share that data. That's really good. A significant percentage of you are not getting anywhere near enough, and I would say you should be looking at 500 plus views every 90 days. I mean, do the maths, everybody. 500 plus views every 90 days is, oh, I'm not even going to be recorded saying this, but that's, that's a lot. Anything less than that is not enough. So you need to be asking yourself, what are you doing to lure people onto your profile, a bit like a sticky spider's web so you can go and grab them? Make your life easier. Stop sourcing so intensely and start doing stuff to attract attention. All of the advice that Rose gave you on your profile earlier is designed to pull you into searches that your candidates and your clients are generating. So you appear in those searches, they go, oh, who's this interesting person? Show that their faces to you via your profile view and then you've got them. I think sourcing is clever, and I would never tell you to stop sourcing totally, but I think we put too much stock in it because our clients can source as well. But attracting is utterly, utterly genius. And when we worked with lots of clients on the recruitment technology and sourcing methods in 2016, we found out, disgustingly, that 80% of the placements they made, the candidates were already on their internal systems. They just not sourced them. Now, give me an 80% in your chat if you kind of feel that might be you guys too, i.e., you spent loads of time sourcing, and then actually they were already there, albeit they were probably just a bit dirty, which is really, really common. So we're getting quite a few people saying 80%, and that is really common, and there's nothing to be ashamed of, but obviously let's not end 2017 the way we started it, otherwise, you know. So who wants to spend 50% of their day sourcing? I know I don't. I know I, the recruiters that we work with don't want to do that. If that equates to 15K per year per recruiter and you only manage a 10-person band, that's 150K's worth of time spent doing something that, one, your competitors are doing, which doesn't make you competitive. Two, your clients can very easily do for themselves, and trust me, they've probably got more of a budget to do that because they're using LinkedIn as an offensive weapon to basically kick out recruiters. But just please have a think about what could you do with that 150K a year, even if you just reduced it by half? 75K a year after being more effective on LinkedIn, what would you do with that 75K? I've yet to meet a recruitment leader who loves spending money. Um, on stuff that they can't guarantee is going to get them a return on investment. So just have a think about that. Please also think about that 67% of LinkedIn users class themselves as news junkies. Not job junkies, not recruitment junkies, but they are going online every single day looking for stuff to make life better. Um, life, jobs, apps, whatever you may be. And if you've been on any of our content or adverts workshops, you'll know that we will push you to spend two or three minutes a day, drawing attention to yourself, not just with a great but quiet profile, but with regular updates that you can even use things like Buffer and Hootsuite at all times of day to schedule, and please don't forget Saturdays and Sundays because candidates are really active then. But if 40% of your database, i.e. your LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn database, is online, on LinkedIn every day, and you all you do is post jobs, but they're news junkies, what a waste. So tell me, be honest, and this is a chat question, not a poll question. Go into your questions panel and just tell me how often do you share content every single day? In other words, how often do you attract attention? Because if we're all worried about not being able to source anymore, seriously, and you're not attracting attention, then it's just a false economy here. You're wasting 15 grand a year sourcing when you could be spending five minutes a day getting people to look at your profile. I just find that crazy, and that's why we want some perspective on the changes to LinkedIn. It's still a fantastic system. Can you use it to attract talent so they trust you and they show their face enough? Warm calls, as my lovely friend Greg Savage says, are better than cold calls. A warm call is, hi, I noticed you've been checking me out recently. Uh, I noticed that we're both into X, Y, and Z. Be great to connect. So let me know when you're free for a chat. And then a week later, they've connected with you. I can see we're connected now. I'd really love to talk to you about stuff. You don't have to go to fourth base within the first call. <laughs> I've got someone called Nicholas saying, my recruiters are trying to gain attraction quite frequently. I'm thinking that might be code for something. <laughs> 
Think about how you can attract and engage. This isn't a training session. This is an insight session. So look at your profile. Look at what's called your content insights. We don't have time for a full demo of this today. Who's looking at you? What's working? Look at your flag, your notification section on LinkedIn. What's actually happening? Please bear in mind, by the way, that you will not get notifications by email. So you need to be checking that that little box in the top right hand corner of LinkedIn just keep it open check it randomly throughout the day but if you're getting lots of people engaging with you without you knowing it LinkedIn won't keep that list live for very long it flicks quite quickly and I think LinkedIn want you to be in the system I kind of game what I understand why bear in mind please a lovely way to just keep in touch with people which seems a bit fluffy but it's bloody effective is birthdays never underestimate the most important day in your candidates life yeah, it's not a birthday, it's their day. If you're not there wishing them happy birthday, you are not their, client, their, their recruiter. Think about looking for new roles, looking at post likes, think about the follows you're getting. Think about LinkedIn Publisher. Don't think about publishing jobs on it, Mr. and Mrs. You're not allowed to do that, but you can publish content. And obviously, endorsements. In the very least, if someone endorses, you say thank you. And by the way, this is back to basics 101. You should be looking at your LinkedIn publisher, maybe creating a system called Feedly, which allows you to bring content together in one place, spending five minutes, we've all got five minutes a day, to push content out. And remember, don't use the excuse that you don't have time and you're not working at 8 o'clock at night, because ultimately, um, you've got these scheduling tools to push, basically attract attention even while you're sleeping. I want you attracting attention even while you're interviewing. This is multitasking for recruiters. Can you please tell me via your chat facility, and I'm not going to read these out for confidentiality purposes, but what CRM, what recruitment system do you guys use? Because it might be we can give you some tips today on being more effective with this. So obviously the systems that we specialize in here are Bond Adapt all versions, Bullhorn all versions, RDB, etc. We've been working, I've certainly been using Bond for 17 years now, which is a long time, and we are Bond at Bullhorn's only international training partner, so we know their systems extremely well and we love going in and helping people. But both Bond and Bullhorn, for example, and some of the others that you're mentioning are extremely good at linking with LinkedIn and enabling you to have a pretty seamless process. So just have a think about that and make sure that you're aware of, uh, someone said don't laugh. Yeah, I'm going to try not to, Nicholas. <laughs> we know all about that. Absolutely, we know a bit. If it's still effective, then we're happy with that. Right. I'm really passionate about these three things. And I speak to recruitment leaders all the time who say, Lisa, I'm sick of spending money on loads of external systems. They don't allow me to be effective. They just allow me to spend more of my budget and not really have a handle on what's going on. And I was an IT director in a previous life. And the CRM system for me was king. And by the way, continues to be. So even though we do a lot of digital marketing, a lot of LinkedIn, a lot of innovative advert training, the CRM piece for me is where it's at. So three things. Yes, you've got LinkedIn, but only you have access to your recruitment CRM, and that is fantastic for client relationships and client retention. I want you to go into a client office and say, yes, we both have access to LinkedIn, but I've got a CRM with X amount of warm candidates that I keep in contact regularly, that I can search for within seconds, even via my mobile device while I'm sat, within, sat in front of you. I can tell you where they are and what they're doing, and I'm going to charge you X for information based on that criteria. Yes, we both have LinkedIn, but I have a CRM with all of your ideal talent on. I think that's a very compelling argument. Your CRM obviously can improve the value of your business. I've been through quite a few, let's call them recruitment deals, where the CRM was looked at and either laughed at by the auditors um, and therefore devalued um, or looked at and gone, hold on a minute, if all the recruiters quit today, this data is awesome. Your LinkedIn community is not worth anything. I'm really sorry. It's what you do with it that counts. So we're often advising recruitment leaders on how they can turn the LinkedIn community into a valuable CRM asset. Something for you to think about if you've been kind of chewing over this for the last couple of years. How can you turn this into an asset? And let's not forget that LinkedIn, although it is an extremely powerful bit of kit and it's fantastic at attracting attention, generating leads, all of that stuff, candidate and client management and call lists CRM is where it's at and whether we like it or not that's what we need to be basically using more effectively so you can tell how passionate we are about this but lead gen is still a really really important part of your roles whether you feel you need to generate leads or not I'm a big fan of everybody wants better leads I'm going to hand over to Rose to talk about that from a LinkedIn perspective 
Yeah, LinkedIn definitely. Lead generation, it's, it's absolutely everywhere, no matter what you look at. I mean, these are just some of the examples or the main examples that we would look at as well. So we've got company pages. I mean, I hope that everybody is following it or at least looking at their target clients on a regular basis and having a look at those pages. Company pages have changed quite recently as well, and actually there's loads more information on that, interesting information that there, were, that, that there wasn't there before. Um, so have a look at those. You know, you, you'll have the likes of the larger companies actually paying for their own LinkedIn job adverts, so you'll see all of that data on there. Uh, groups for me is a big thing that, if I'm honest, recruiters kind of for some reason don't still get. Um, lots of people tend to join a group, even though they're now all what we call private, and they join a group and then they just don't do anything whatsoever. And for me, I think if you're joining a group, you need to think of a group as like a networking event. If you went to a networking event, would you just walk in the door, not speak to anybody, and stand in the corner? I mean, what 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 would be the point in you going? You're not going to get any attention. You're not going to get any new leads or, or conversations or anything like that. And groups are the same. Join a group, don't do anything. You're not going to get anything back from that. But there's, uh, there's a, a jobs page within groups. If you are a member of a group, um, you can have discussions in there, so attract attention to yourself. You can comment on people's discussions, attracting attention to yourself. But you can also post your jobs in there as well and see what other jobs are going on in there. Just make sure you put them in the right place. Status updates, obviously you looking through your home feed and seeing um, if, if anybody's mentioning anything which might uh, appear to be a lead. You can run job searches in LinkedIn, and did you know that you can actually save up to 10 for free job searches, or let's call them lead searches, because we're recruiters in LinkedIn. So next time you do a job search, I might just drop on very quickly and show you that in a second. Next time you're doing a job search, if you do them at all, get those alerts saved and get LinkedIn to feed you that data. And another top tip that you can do is change your profile or your sort of jobs you may be interested in. Because at the moment, if you go to the jobs homepage, it will probably feed you lots of recruitment jobs. But if you change your settings, you can get LinkedIn to feed you the, the types of job leads that you want for your candidates um, rather than jobs for yourself. So yeah, absolutely, leads are all over the place on, on LinkedIn. So we've kind of come to the end of this. Summary, get your makeup on. I've yet to meet a recruiter that would go out on the town to score, looking like crap, sounding terrible, not really having very much to say. You're only going to attract a certain kind of candidate, and it's going to take you a long time to do that. So I always say when we're working with recruiters, get your makeup on before you start going crazy. And please just think about what you're doing on a daily basis, i.e. sourcing. And how much time you're spending on that and be real about that and actually ask yourself, can my clients do this for themselves? Am I being competitive? What else could I be doing to attract candidates to me to make my life easier? I want you writing great adverts attracting relevant talent to them, placing one of those candidates and then having another four to send out via a mailer and having going back to the good old days where we used to spec out candidates. I want you to attract more attention so that when you do advertise your jobs, you get more relevant people looking at them. So please think about your workflow and what you're doing to do that. Attracting attention shouldn't be sort of solely about running an event or that kind of thing. You should be in people's mind's eye all the time and not just because you're posting jobs. Please think about your CRM. It's the only real thing right now that most recruiters have as a differentiator. USPs in the market don't exist anymore. But the quality of your data, the value of it that your clients, and let's not forget your candidates will have of you if you've got great data on your systems is absolutely key. And obviously, please make sure and don't forget that most of you when quizzed would admit that you don't place all the vacancies that you're given, and even the ones you do place sometimes are a real pain in the butt. The client isn't what you want them to be, you're not charging the rates that you want. So never ever forget to generate quality, cool leads for your business, because I want to take the current national average, which is 2 out of 10 placed, and I want to make that at least 3 or 4 or 5 out of 5, <laughs> instead of us working on too many of the wrong vacancies. But the world hasn't ended, everybody. LinkedIn is still a viable bit of kit. There's loads more stuff. Rosa said, take five minutes today to rinse through your profile. Um, look at some of the fields and the way that they've changed. Make sure your profile can do a good job while you're not online. It's got to be your hologram, like Obi-Wan Kenobi or something like that. God forbid, God forbid I get a Star Wars reference in here. Now, if you want to spend less time on LinkedIn, 
um, and you want more tips and, and ideas on how LinkedIn can be more effective, whether or not you've got a paid for version or the free version, type LinkedIn into your box and we'll send you some information. If you also or and or want your CRM to be more effective, you want your users to use your CRM more effectively, you want the CRM to be the font of all knowledge and the king of your business to be a USP, then put CRM into your chat facility and again, we'll send you some information on that. Now, if, like a lot of people out there, you want to download our free ebook, which is all about what you need to stop doing this year to make your lives more effective, and put stop in your chat. And again, we'll send you a link to the free ebook. It's literally, it'll take you five minutes to read. Uh, 22 industry leaders in um, recruitment telling you what they, what they give you permission to stop doing, because we're doing too much right now and not making enough of a profit margin. And for obvious reasons, we'd love it if you subscribe to our blog. There's lots of great advice on that, as well as our YouTube channel. Lots of really cool videos to one or two minutes to get you sped up throughout the day. I'll let Rose finish off the webinar now, but it's great having you all here today. Take care, everyone.